Hey there, this is Natalie. And while I said pretty much everything I wanted to say about the High Guardian Spice cartoon as a series in my previous video about it, I couldn't help but notice the latest stuff doing the rounds about one of the writers of that show, who I mentioned in quite disparaging terms in that video, Kate Leff. As I said in that video, and as I'm sure you've seen if you watch just about any coverage of High Guardian Spice, Kate Leth had a well-documented history of casually tweeting misandrous statements along the lines of kill all men, all men are trash, and so on. This hasn't really impacted her career in terms of being hired for things, from what we can see from the outside at least, but it is certainly something that is well known about her and which has been brought up a lot by audiences when it comes to not really wanting to support her work or give things like High Guardian Spice that she wrote on a look, assuming it will contain those kinds of views. And I mean, it does. But I already covered that in the last video I did about it. So the more recent news on this came from a tweet thread from Kate on November the 4th, where she was responding to people bringing up her old statements. Kate's tweets read, Funny how people who spam my contact form with demands for accountability because I worked on a cartoon always use burner emails. How dare you say kill all men? Well, hun, those tweets are eight years old and I was Tumblr pilled at the time. If you can't get that, I don't know what to tell you. I block people who are dickheads. Also, nothing is my show. I've only ever been one person on a writing staff. Now, I am completely against cancel culture, as you'll know if you saw my video about cancel culture responding to Noralities. So I don't think Kate should never work again, or that we should necessarily be repeatedly bringing up old tweets from eight years ago to judge her on, if they don't represent her current opinions, and if she's spoken out with what her current opinions are. Equally, if she does still hate all men, which I doubt she does because she seems to tweet almost constantly about her boyfriend, so she must like at least one of them, then I don't think she shouldn't be allowed to say she hates all men. Or that if she wants to simply say that stuff to pander to a target audience of Tumblrinas who think misandry is cool, then I don't think she shouldn't be allowed to do that either. I think people should be able to voice their opinions on stuff I don't agree with, even if it's casually hating on 50% of the human race, given it's not like she's going to actually commit genocide, we hope. And I also think creatives should be able to choose the audiences they want their public personas and work to appeal to. The thing is, that if someone does want to take a hard line that they know is going to be seen as completely objectionable to a lot of people, especially when done in a confrontational, aggressive manner, they're basically setting themselves out as being against those people. And that's what the status quo will be unless that person has a sincere change of heart that they make publicly known, in which case it's down to how convinced the people they initially antagonised are that the change is genuine, whether the past stance can be forgiven and forgotten. With all this talk about her past man-hating tweets, she effectively had two options. Stand by what she said, or apologise and clarify a new position that basically divorces herself from what she said before. With no apologies and Kate just standing by her original statements, say if she tweeted, yeah, men are trash, deal with it. She'd be just as gross as before in the eyes of people like me, who don't think it's fair game to say stuff about men or white men or white straight men or whatever that you would never say about any other generalized group of people. But she'd be standing by her own words and politics and by the people from Tumblr or wherever who she previously aligned herself with and targeted with her work. Or if she'd properly apologised and disavowed her previous Tumblr mindset, perhaps saying something like, I was just caught up in a weird scene at the time. Looking back, the stuff I said and thought back then really was dreadful and I definitely don't feel that way anymore. I'm sorry for being like that and I really encourage other people who think it's okay to say that sort of thing to think a bit more deeply about it. Then that would be the point where the people who found her earlier statements distasteful might probably rethink where they stood on her for future projects. But it would also be biting the hand that's been feeding her by basically distancing herself from the Tumblr crowd. 
But what she actually did was kind of both and neither at the same time, thus pleasing nobody. Let's look at the tweet again. It says, how dare you say kill all men? Well, hun, those tweets are eight years old and I was Tumblr-pilled at the time. So first, aside from the obnoxious tone and the use of the word hun, what we can get here is that she's distancing herself from the tweets by saying it was eight years ago. But actually, the collage image of her tweets that's been circulating shows that there were tweets of that ilk up to three years ago, which is probably when the collage image was made, in line with that being when the much maligned original trailer for High Guardian Spice came out, which is where the picture of Kate herself used in the image comes from. She has since allegedly deleted a lot of tweets with the keyword men, so it's hard to say when exactly she stopped saying that kind of thing, if she ever did. Now, three years ago is still three years ago. You can change your mind about a lot of things in that time. So the fact she wasn't honest about the time frame there wouldn't necessarily mean that she did still think what she said then was acceptable now. But considering the attention on her right now is connected to High Guardian Spice, which she was working on at that time, we can certainly surmise that the Kate who wrote for the series was still, as she says, Tumblr-pilled. So any publicity or criticism she's been receiving as having worked on that project while being of a misandrist mindset and putting her politics into her work can't really be dispelled by this. The tweet goes on to say, if you can't get that, I don't know what to tell you. I block people who are dickheads. Well, why would they get that? For one thing, it's not actually true that those tweets were all from eight years ago anyway, and that's evident from the image everyone criticizing you is most likely referring to. And for another, what have you said or done since that would make anyone understand that you were no longer either a member of or trying to appeal to the Tumblr types? She's saying Tumblr pilled like it's a bad thing, which it obviously is, and I'm going to take a look at some posts on Tumblr about High Guardian Spice in a minute to round off the video with some top cringe. But she's not really taking that next step of disavowing that mindset either. She's more somehow trying to position herself as a victim rather than either apologising or standing by her previous words. I'm no psychologist, but to me it feels a bit narcissistic. The next part and the tweet that came after it are also interesting, as it's almost like, wait, no, it's exactly like she's trying to deflect criticisms of High Guardian Spice, which has a 1.5 out of 10 rating on IMDb and 1.5 out of 5 on its home site Crunchyroll, away from herself. Also, nothing is my show. I've only ever been one person on a writing staff. Well, yes, Kate, but the terrible opening sequence, which no, you probably didn't have anything to do with, does literally just have the words written by Kate Leth on screen for some episodes. So when someone reviewing the show is looking for who might have written the awful dialogue in said episode, it's going to be you, isn't it? The next and final tweet from Kate that I want to talk about before getting into some nice soothing Tumblr stuff continues on this theme. As a writer on a staff, I have no power over design, marketing, animation, or larger story arcs slash decisions. I do my job, I write my scripts, and I'm proud of the work I do. But I'm not the powers that be, not on anything that's out now, anyway. I'm just grateful for the work. And yes, nobody thought you did have power over the marketing or animation or any of the other stuff that's been criticized about High Guardian Spice. We didn't think you did the voice of every character or personally composed and sang the god-awful OP either. But the script was one of the things receiving the most criticism. In fact, for me, it was the worst part of the show because I'm a writer and the writing is the part of any work of fiction I pay the most attention to. I've watched anime that had a glorified slideshow for animation and found stuff to enjoy about it because the script was good. Like for instance, Way of the House Husband. But if the script is bad, then even the best character designs and sound production, which we can safely say High Guardian Spice does not have anyway, will not save it. But that's not the point. Evaluating Kate's work as a writer is a subjective thing, and some people may have liked the script. What I'm really bothered by here is this sense of throwing the other people who worked on it under the bus. Like, yeah, I don't rate the work they did on it, but it's not very classy to be like, 
you know, most of the stuff you guys didn't like had nothing to do with me. I was just happy for the work. I mean, I get it to some extent. I've been a ghostwriter before and I've written stuff to other people's plot specifications or whatever. That I did do my best with, but would never really want to be held responsible for the finished product over, where I had no real input into the story or themes or whatever. I equally wouldn't expect to take credit for the story and themes or whatever if they turned out to be very well received. But that's how being a ghostwriter works, at least for books. I don't know much about writing for television, admittedly. Here Kate's name was very much attached, and I'm sure if High Guardian Spice had been the next big thing, she'd be trying to play up rather than play down her involvement. And here it feels like, well, she worked with all these other people on this thing. She's taking the most flack as one of the more infamous members of the team, and she's trying to say she doesn't deserve it, because all she did was the crap dialogue. She's basically saying, send your complaints to one of my teammates. She just seems like someone who'd throw other people under the bus, rather than stand by what they created together, in the face of any criticism. That doesn't make the people who don't like the work like you more. It's like when a pop star comes out and says they'd never buy their own records because the songs that were written for them to sing are trash. We might agree that the songs are trash, but the singer doesn't look better by trashing their songwriters or producers. Still, those are my thoughts on Kate Leth's non-apology, but let's get back to the term tumblerpilled that she used. I've never heard anyone say tumblerpilled before, but I think we can tell what she means by it. And I've got to say, now is a bad time for her to be being even remotely disparaging to Tumblr culture, given it is that den of voles that you'll find High Guardian Spice's fans, or at least defenders, in. I have never been much of a user of Tumblr, and find the site, honestly, a pretty baffling experience. I don't really know how to use it, or what you're supposed to do by way of interacting with the posts, and I don't get the culture at all. It seems like it's all people putting the suffix core onto things, massive overuse of the word aesthetic, and people referring to male fictional characters as soft, which I think they mean is a good thing, rather than anything to do with erectile dysfunction, but I can't be sure. But I did manage to just about work out how to search for a topic once I realised hashtags in this new layer of hell have spaces in them, which is just heretical, and I found some High Guardian Spice posts that I feel like sharing with you poor bastards. So here's one. I honestly feel like the show isn't going to be that bad. People are just going to do what they did to Magical Girl Friendship Squad and label it SJW garbage. Because it's a cutesy looking show with LGBT and female characters, and they're going to nitpick every single little scene, even though they would defend trash ass anime with a generic male protagonist being surrounded by big tittied, over sexualized high school girls, or defend shit like interspecies reviewers in a heartbeat. Actually, to be honest, I have nothing to comment on this one, because that does actually sound like something I would typically do. Though I've never heard of Magical Girl Friendship Squad, that's surely got to be the title of a parody, hasn't it? I'm a bit scared to look. Here's the next one. Y'all. Crunchyroll has a serious problem with, I don't know, trolls, alt-right weirdos, whatever they are. It's super deflating to see a super great, wonderfully written Crunchyroll original, High Guardian Spice, being rated so poorly because of forced LGBTQ plus diversity and stuff like that. If anyone out there has a Crunchyroll account, consider giving High Guardian Spice a watch. It's gorgeous, with wonderful characters. I haven't had this much fun with the show in so long. Well, I did give it a watch. And I mean, gorgeous is completely subjective. But if you think a mishmash of flatly coloured blobby bean people on painted backgrounds in a totally different art style with stock PNGs of bread and apples is gorgeous, you'd probably have some kind of seizure if you watched something like Violet Evergarden. And if this is the most fun you've had with a show in a long time, what have you been watching that's less fun than this? The only thing I can think of is this show my dad likes, where they show you how they make mundane items like tin cans or possibly one of those Kursk exact videos that make you contemplate entropy and the inevitable heat death of the universe. 
but actually even an existential crisis is more fun than that scene with the flying squirrel beasts dancing around with a locket that goes on for about five minutes straight. As for the trolls and alt-right weirdos on Crunchyroll, I think enough people have debunked that particular view of the people who don't like the show in other videos. But to be completely honest, even here on Tumblr, where reason is scarce, there are plenty of people saying they actually hated the show. And on Tumblr, Twitter, YouTube comment sections, including my own, and even in reviews on Crunchyroll, there are a lot of people from the LGBT community saying that they found the representation in the show at best reductive and at worst downright appalling. So no, that ain't it. Finally, because I think this wild ride through Tumblr needs to be kept short, just to make sure we don't get Tumblr pilled, there's this. I've seen so many people get upset about High Guardian Spice, saying it's not anime. I'm really wondering how these people would react to learning that anime fan favourite, Netflix's Castlevania, technically isn't an anime either. Well, that depends on definitions. Some anime fans are happy to accept things that have the same feel to the story and a very clearly Japanese influence to the art style and production as anime, regardless of where they were made. Which is why people do still to this day debate whether shows like Avatar or Castlevania should be called anime or not. I'm going to have to assume you're going by the definition that Castlevania isn't technically anime because it wasn't produced in Japan. Because otherwise what you're saying makes no sense. But no, anime fans aren't going to react in any particular way on learning that because there was already a very big clue that Castlevania wasn't made in Japan that I think we all noticed. And that's the fact, it's in English. Still though, Castlevania as an IP is an iconic game franchise, which does originate from Japan. And the story and art style are very much in line with what fans of the genre of anime it would most closely resemble do like. So whether you accept it as anime is just semantics. If you like seinen anime and you like Castlevania as a property, you'll probably like it. High Guardian Spice is not just not anime because it was made in America, it has nothing in common with anime and doesn't seem to have been made with any attempts to appeal to anime fans, even fans of things like Magical Girl series, which it shares very little with actually, when it comes to the story and the tropes used. I could get into things beyond art style that give anime a certain feel, like the differences between Asian and Western story structure conventions. But there's nothing in High Guardian Spice that even feels like it's paying tribute to anime or trying to win over anime fans. Still, that's more than enough Tumblr for one lifetime. As I said, there were actually some posts on there that were impartial and some that were negative towards the show for similar reasons to people I've seen outside of Tumblr. So I'm really just playing up the Tumblrness of the discourse around High Guardian Spice on Tumblr just because it's kind of amusing and because I wanted to have a look at what Tumblr users were saying after seeing Kate Leth talk about being Tumblr pilled. They have been apparently advertising High Guardian Spice to no end on Tumblr, which is probably the only smart decision they've made in terms of marketing the thing in reality. But it seems like even on there, it's not winning as many hearts and minds as they might have hoped. But anyway, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments and as always, thank you to my supporters on Patreon and to everyone who helps me out by subscribing and watching my content. This was a bit of an unusual video, but I did feel like talking more about High Guardian Spice and the Kate Leth thing. So I hope you found it interesting, but if not, I'll be back with more anime analysis type stuff in the next few days. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again very soon.